driving Ivan here at the Rockville Car Show. And there's a lot of cool stuff here and I'm gonna show it all to you. So let's get started. All right, this will start it off. Why not? Where are you gonna see another one of these? A 1962 armored car, GMC. And look, it's actually got real bullet holes in it. <laughs> they encourage you to touch this car. No, the bullet did not make it all the way through, it says. And that's pretty cool armored vehicle just look at the just look at the size of this thing just look at the scale of it man it's outrageous i saw it driving in this morning and it was just <laughs> something that you do not see every day a lot of that here at the car show today this is the truck and fire engine section so of course little kids love it fireman anyway good looking cars here and uh let's continue on so when you see the cuda you think hemi and this one is that purple plum color, so cool. It's the last of the Ronnie Reagan specials. 1988 Chrysler. Nice. Fifth Avenue. Does it have our finest Corinthian leather? <laughs> our finest Corinthian leather. This purple plum color is just really, really plum crazy cool, isn't it? Wow. Fireflight, DeSoto, Sportsman. Don't see one of those every day. Certainly. Wow. A lot of cars from the 40s here today. Suicide doors on this one. That's pretty cool. Plymouth. Unrestored with 23,000 original miles. Wow. That's pretty cool. Ooh, this one is particularly nice to me. Plymouth Valiant. And uh, looks like it's on steroids. Cool. Ooh, let's see these fins. What are these fins attached to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Millennium Falcon. Okay. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Plymouth Fury, 1960. And uh, Millennium Falcon. Look, it's Chewbacca. That's pretty funny. You see it all out here. And just the colors of these cars. Look at that. Yellow. There's a gold. Looks like a, probably a, what is it, a satellite? That looks like a Dodge Dart to me. That's what it looks like. Um, they all shared similar platforms. But look at that yellow over here, blue and white. And then uh, you've got this Packard and two shades of green. Wow. There's a puke green here. Charger. Not the best green, but uh, still. With the brown interior, it looks great. Wow. We're getting all Starsky and Hutch over here, too. Look at that. Cool. Let's just continue down the line here and just see some of these cars. And uh, just keep walking on down. Oh, I followed this one in this morning. I was wondering exactly what it was. Rambler Country. Hudson Rambler. Very cool. Gorgeous car. See the hood ornament? That's worthy of a close-up, I think. Woo! Very nice. Did that originally come on the car, or was that a... Who knows? Who knew? Might be an upgrade. Plymouth Barracuda. Looks great. Next to a Duster. Wow. Beautiful cars here. Chrysler Imperial. Another Chrysler. It's great how they have them all together and very well organized. As far as the eye can see. Oh, yeah. We're going to have some fun today. Did you guys bring a car? Cool stuff. Wow. Is that like a Dodge Omni? Chrysler Turbo. Let's see. Oh, original window sticker. We got to see this. Wow. So they're claiming 19 in the city and 28 on the highway. These are very light cars. That's not even bad by today's standards. But uh, 9364 for this very, very lovely. I'm trying to figure out exactly what it is. It's, uh, oh, the Chrysler Laser. Of course. <laughs> I remember those cars, and uh, not many people had them. <laughs> Dodge Aspen, you saw these occasionally back then, too. Saw a lot of these. A lot of people had these Plymouths right here. Brom, that's a special edition. With the fancy, fancy top. Look at the curved rear window. Man, that's cool. <laughs> Well, she's all green. 1974 Plymouth Valiant. And on down the line we go. 
Studebaker over here. A bunch of Studebakers. And, uh, wow. Chrysler, LeBaron convertible. Here we are. There's another Dodge Dart variant. Uh, this is probably a 63, 64. Push button. Right? Bit. Push button training. Yeah. Push button yeah. training. Yeah, this is similar to uh, my mom's 66 Dodge Dart convertible. Uh, it was a GT, although it was not very fast. It had a slant six engine, but <laughs> couldn't really get out of its way. This is the Chrysler TC, the Maserati. So let's check out the interior because that's what this one's all about. It's the interior. Wow. And uh, being a stick shift, this one is uber, uber rare. Not a lot of these were manual transmission cars. So there you go. And if you look under the hood, Chrysler by Maserati. That's right. Dual overhead cam, 16 valve. Made it to a five speed. Man, that is pretty cool stuff right there. Very rare. But this uh, this guy's my uh, PE Dodge teacher Dart. at the school I work at. Oh yeah, yeah. Dodge Dart convertible, very cool. My mom had one. 63. Loved that one, I think. Loved yep. it. Yeah. Beautiful cars. Imperial. And look at this one. Looks like a lowered Viper. That's what we got here. It's got to be lowered. Yeah. That's not the right height. But still very cool. Huh. Very nice. What do we have? Oh, yeah, they use a lot of people document their cars, and that makes it all the more cool, I think. Uh, what's going on there? Star of David. Dodge Brothers Deluxe Business Coupe. So here's all the Lotuses. This one is definitely my color. It's an 87 Turbo Esprit. This is the last year of this body style. Dejario. And uh, Stevens came in and did the redesign, and uh, this is kind of the Bond one there, but uh, not as pretty if you ask me. Here we have an Elan. Why does this car look familiar to you? Well, have you seen the Miata? They just basically stole this design. That's all Mazda did, is just steal this car right here. The Lotus Elan from the 60s. Let's see what year this one is. 1967, see? This is the 67 Lotus Salon, which is very similar to a 19, uh, what year was it? 1989 Mazda Miata. <laughs> Basically the same thing. Although this is probably lighter. Twin cam Lotus engine. And this one's a little race prepped, very cool. Here we have another Esprit. And then, as you know, I have an 88 Esprit. You can check out my review of that one. And I do have a Europa as well, and that's what this is. This is a twin cam Lotus Europa. There's a difference between mine and this one, the S2. The S1 had plexiglass windows. The S2 had roll-down windows, but this part right here went straight back. They actually lowered this for better rear visibility. So I like the earlier cars better, although this is awful pretty in blue and brown. And uh, it does have the nicer twin cam engine right here. Uh, mine has a Renault engine in it, so... This is the later car, 74, and faster, but uh, I do still like the look of the earlier ones better, even though this one is quite cool as well. And originally this car was built to be the GT40. They just didn't go with this design, so Lotus decided to build it anyway. And there you have it. Well, driving Ivan loves wagons, and here's two really nice ones. AMC Eagle, four-wheel drive. Man, at the time, you know, this was the 80s, and, and not a lot of cars were all-wheel drive. Not a lot of cars had all-wheel drive and these awesome family trucks or wood sides on them either. So, yeah, this is just pure 80s through and through. What year is it? 84. 84, yeah. And uh, these were really, really cool. It's a shame uh, they never really uh, did too well as an automotive manufacturer, but AMC was certainly cool. They brought the cool cars, and... There's an example of one. Moving over to here to this rad wagon with the suitcases and total family truckster uh, layout here. Looks like it's got a lot of spare parts in it too that are for sale. So there you go. If anybody's watching this video and wants some parts, there you have it. All AMC day. So, oh wow, you don't see these every day. Original window sticker. That is cool. How much? $2,911. 
with options such as two-tone paint for $21.95. Individual front seats for $25.50. What's the expensive? The overdrive transmission, $106. Wow, that's just crazy money. <laughs> Captain America and uh, just a really cool, cool dash that you get in these old cars. This one has the patina, I like it. 62 Rambler Classic. Looks good. Wow. Something about an original car like this one with the patina and everything. Nice. Classic Volvo. This is the one where they had the advertisement of the car jumping up in the air. <laughs> that was a cool ad. Scimitar here with a, uh, is that a convertible roof? Wow. This is a shooting brake. A two-door wagon. GTE Scimitar. I, oh, it's right-hand drive, too. Looks to me like a Jensen GT, but um, certainly inspired. I don't know which one inspired which. 73. So that's about the time of the Jensen GT. Um, very, very cool there. Shooting brake wagon. Nice. Triumph GT6. Fastback there. Really nice design. And uh, I think they're just great looking cars. And this is a cool color, too. Panasport kind of sport looking wheels there. Very nice. It's got everything out here today. Mazda 929. Another Volvo. 280ZX. And uh, look. <laughs> the Triumph. I've seen this one before. The Triumph that looks like a Honda Civic. Or Honda Accord, actually, from that time. Triumph Acclaim. HLS. Really cool. There's the Amphicar. In a really cool color too, light blue, and uh, looks like it's on stilts a little bit because, of course, it is a boat. Austin Healy Sprite. I know this car very well because I have one, and this is a '67, and mine's a 1966, so they're interchangeable. I also have a MG Midget '67 because, again, the parts are interchangeable and it has a hard top that I can swap on both cars. So. Uh, Really cool. Not the bug eyes. A lot of people like the bug eyes, but I like this one. Clean, simple lines and uh, a very pure driving experience, to say the least. Here's this Marcos. Look elsewhere. Just Google Drive and Ivan and Marcos. I have a video on this car as well, elsewhere on YouTube. Very cool car, though. Saab Turbo. Yep. This is like a 900 Turbo from back in the day. Seinfeld's car, basically. It's a car he drove. And uh, here's a Morgan, which really still look the same today. You can buy a brand new car that looks just like this. They do have a more modern looking one called the Arrow. <laughs> but uh, Morgans were traditional British cars, like the MG here. And they still build them looking that way. They used to have a wood frame basically on them. And uh, I think they've upgraded that recently. Here's the Bug Eye Sprite. So uh, that's the one that uh, Frog Eye, Bug Eye. And, uh, Really cool look in and of itself. But, uh, bigger Austin Healy's. Like this one. 3000 Mark II. I think a Mark III. Nice. And on down the line here. Not sure what's going on with this one. Let's see. Because it looks like. Yeah, it is a Triumph. So it's a Spitfire Mark II. That's a cool car. Look at the detail on this thing. Very, very cool. Just out of nowhere, there's a VTEC Type R Honda here. Nice looking. Another bug eye. And on the end, another Sprite. There you have it. This one is 62. Sprite Mark II. Eric Walgerty. Nice car, Eric. Looks good. Ooh, look. A Mini on steroids. Right hand drive. Looks like it's got a body kit. Lucas. This is a, what do we got? 73 Austin Mini Cooper, 1300. Let me see the engine, of course you do. Very, very nice, 1300. Interesting interior in this one too. BMC, what is this thing? Rover, yeah, 3500 V8. I always thought these were cool looking cars. Interesting, not sure about the maintenance, who knows? But uh, looks good. 
This one too. Wow. TVR. Right hand drive. Oops. Yep. These TVRs are quite rare. We did bring them over. <coughs> Certainly saw some back in the day. And uh, really special cars. They're very fast and uh, very, very British. Which to me makes it quite cool. Celica GTS. This one from 1985. I thought this was the best shape right here. That is a darn fine looking car. If you look at the cars from this era, mid 80s, early 80s, they didn't look this good. This one always did look good. Just check it out inside. GTS Toyota Celica. Yeah, totally 80s. <laughs> but uh, really fine condition this one. Very, very nice. Let's see. It's a 1985 Celica GTS convertible. EJ Fox. There's what I have. Cool car. Really early Triumph there. TR250. Uh, that's an old one. TR2. Anyway, it's like a TR6 on the end there. It might be a TR5. Here's a TR6, certainly. Because you can see it on license plates. Mercedes SL. Lost over here with the British cars. Must have gotten really lost when he was parking it. But I love the SL. Check out my review of the SL. I have three of them actually that I've reviewed. But the newest one is my keeper. It's blue, two shades of blue actually. And uh, avid viewers of mine will know I love blue cars. And if I can, I try to buy blue cars. I wouldn't mind having this one. Early, early MG. Wow. 1951 MG Tegan Roadster. And these cars, when they started coming over, from mostly servicemen brought them over. This is what really made sports cars popular in America. This started the sports car craze, and for good reason. These cars handled much better than the American cars of the time, and, uh, well, just look at them. Okay, here we go with a Morgan. 1980, yeah, 1984, so that's a newer one, plus four, four cylinder. And then uh, MG here, TC, 1948. And on down the line, let's see what we got. 54 MGTF, and uh, <laughs> I remember these, these early Honda Civics. Wow. Also, uh, Subaru looking as well, actually. Let me see. Honda battery. And, uh, <laughs> gotta love this on the side here. So, yeah. Honda with a stick shift. Look at that coming out there. I learned how to drive stick in cars like these. <laughs> this is a very earlier one. My other car is bigger. <laughs> That's hilarious. Very, very funny. Of course, kids love these things. Why wouldn't they? Another MG here. Looking very, very good. Red grill there. That's pretty cool. Interesting. Hope it run Ooh, look, the MG Coupe. Yeah, I hope their handbrakes work. I'll tell you. Could get hairy. Old cars like these if they slip a little bit. Ooh, the MG GT. Get to that one in a second. But look at this. A sedan. 1955 MG. Model is a Magnet. ZA. To be precise. 55 Magnet. Really cool looking. Look at all the badges this one has. Wow. A show winner. Two. The MG GT. Look, he's got the sales brochure there. I love these. Love shooting brakes. Two door wagon. That's what a shooting brake is, and this one is precisely that. There you have it. Two doors and uh, nice hatchback too for full usability. Ah, uh, yeah. Very, very cool. GB here. And, uh, these are pretty cars, especially with the wire wheels on them. Very, very nice. The interior on this one. Black car, but look. Very nice. Well done. Well done. Oh, this green one right here. And on down. This one's later. 72. And 
72, 272s in a row. Very nice. Wow. As far as the eye can see, cool cars. Don't worry, we'll get to them all. Okay, I'm going to try to speed this video up here. Start with this M6 here. Man, this is just an 80s icon right there. M cars from BMW were just really getting underway then. And uh, the M6, a sedan on steroids. Very, very nice. 69, 2002. And uh, there you go, 3 Series. This is right before the 3 Series. 320 came out and uh, I have one of those. Check my review of that one. It's a black and orange Alp Alpina tribute that I did. That one's for sale actually. If you're interested, let me know. But um, that was the first 3 Series 320 and then this one came along. Standard 80s 3 Series 325. And uh, this one to me, the prettiest BMW is the CS. This one's special because it has an M engine in it. <laughs> Would have had a six-cylinder engine, maybe three liters, but this one, uh, M-powered. Very, very cool. So, uh, this is kind of a resto mod. You got the Alpina wheels on there. Oh, man, that's beautiful. And then on down the line here, classic BMWs, as far as the eye can see. Five series here. Convertible three series. The M3. M3 from the mid late 80s. Let's see what year this one is. 88 Alpina. Now that's a rare, rare car right there. 5 Series Alpina. Wow. Very, very cool. Stick shift, of course. 5 speed. And uh, it's a B7 Turbo. You can still get a B7 these days. That's right. You can still get your 7 Series. B7, they have a B6 now too. So Alpina is just another one of those companies that modified BMWs and I love what they've done to the 7 Series. I'm definitely going to own one of those in the future. But uh, this one is a classic edition. And uh, I'll show you the interior here. Wow, just very, very clean this one. 85 B7. Woo, she's a beauty. Very nice 71 2002. And another M3 here. Wow, these are great. Another 3.0 CS. This one in Bavaria. Famous because Jackie Kennedy actually drove one of these. I think hers was green. And uh, not this shade of green, though. But uh, ooh, look at this one. Is it for sale? Yes, it is. See it on Hemmings.com. Clean interior on this one. Yeah, it's a nice looking 2002 here. Very pretty. And it can be yours. However, with this color right here, that's the one I'd want. Beautiful. Wow. These Bavaria cars look really cool. The sedans, I just like them. BMW Bavaria, 1973. These are gorgeous. That is a pretty cute automatic. I mean, pretty sedan. So sorry. Slip of the tongue there. Happens. M6, 35 CSI, and then a 320i. This one's similar to mine, but it's later. Mine's a 78. I imagine this is a, maybe a early 80s. Let's see. Don't know. Doesn't say. I'd call this an early 80s. So this is a 280,000 mile Cadillac Eldorado. Looks like it's got some suspension issues. But uh, also looks like a nice, well-used, well-loved car. And you gotta love that. You gotta love a car that's driven. Cadillac Alante. My granddad had one of these. Pin and Farina design, two-door. And some of them had these crazy digital dashes. Let's check this one out, see if it does. Yes, it does. It's got the crazy digital dash. Very cool. But um, Cadillac Luxury. Made it with a little bit of Pin and Farina Italian style and North Star engine. Can't go wrong. Eldorado. Eldorado. Uh, this one, some sort of fancier special edition Brom. Or, see. Yep, Brom, 92 Cadillac Brom. This one, very near and dear to me. My dad had a 70 Coupe de Ville convertible. This one's a 69. My dad's was turquoise and white interior. This is the blue on blue. 
really, really nice. Took my driver's test in this car a year later, 1970 version, and we always hit our heads on there. No matter how many times we got in it, we were kids, we forgot. We'd always bang our heads there. Oh, this one had cup holders. <laughs> Not originally. No, nah, it didn't. That's got to be a special build. Um, but really, really nice interior in these. And uh, just pure Cadillac elegance and style. And uh, very soft magic carpet ride with these cars. Really, really cool. And on down the line here. 1958 Cadillac here with the fins. Very, very cool. All right, let's go see the fins, why not? Gotta see the fins, right? Of course we have to see the fins. There are the fins. Yes, yes, yes. Fins, 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 and more fins. This one, a later caddy. Yeah. We'll go up and see the front of this one. Sedan DeVille. And there you go. These are large and in charge. La Salle. Some of these had, I think, Cadillac engines in them. What's this say? 1959 flat top. I'm only the third owner of this mostly original time capsule. One of 14,138 of this model produced by Cadillac in 1959. Got the seats covered just to keep it new looking. Body color is Beaumont beige and white top. Interior color is Fawn Mojave. Dealer installed seat covers. Wow. Pretty cool. So here we have a mid-80s Cadillac and this is a rare bird. They weren't doing a lot of convertibles back then. 1984 Eldorado Beerus. And uh, I'm not sure if this was actually a factory built Cadillac Eldorado. I don't think it was because I think they stopped building them. It might have been conversion by American Sunroof Corporation, but I was talking to the owner and he, he thinks it is original. So if you know, let us know in the comments down below. But uh, I know that they stopped making convertibles for a while because of safety issues. This is a 70 Cadillac Coupe de Ville convertible. Very familiar to me. As I said, I took my driver's test in this one. Turquoise and white, it's my dad's. Great car, if you know where that car is, I want to buy it back. So uh, let me know in the comments, please. Uh, here we go. This must be a 64. Yeah, 64 Eldorado convertible. Green. As green as it can be. <laughs> I bet the trunk is huge. Let's see. Yes, of course it is. Monster trunk in these. And fins too, to boot. Really, really nice. Is that, did they originally have the Cadillac emblem there? Very nice. Cool. Look, you guys are all dressed up. Nice car. Look for the video. Drive an Ivan here. So there you go. Very nice 64 Cadillac and uh, this one. A bit older than 64, definitely. But very, very cool. And this one here, wow, this one is just awesome looking. I gotta come around to the side to show you this beast. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's not really orange, it's kind of red, but, uh, Man, is that a cool color. Let's see what we got here exactly. It's a 1935 Cadillac LaSalle convertible. Let's check it out inside. The running boards on the side. And, uh, stick shift, of course. Rumble seat. <laughs> no, no safety issues on this, of course. Yeah. They just don't build them like that anymore. And it's a shame because it's awful beautiful. Okay, here we are. Rolls. Royce and Bentley. Rolls Royce ride is very, very comfortable and soft. This is on my list. I want a blue and blue version of this car right here. But uh, Bentley's, well, this is just the modern interpretation of speed and uh, they've got the motoring history too. This is a super sports version. And uh, it is $350,000 out the door for the Continental Super Sports Convertible in ice. There you go. Beautiful Bentley's here. And, uh, yeah, this one is just bold and suicide doors and all. Really, really nice looking. And uh, this right here, Claret, that's actually the color. How do I know this? Because my Lotus Turbo Esprit 1988 is Claret as well. This one has some documentation. Let's check it out, shall we? Mulliner Park Award Custom Coach built by Rolls-Royce. Yeah. Chairman of the Bordeaux. 
very 80s. You got the piping on the seats. Even to this day, they continue that. It's a great look. Trays in back so you can eat. And, uh, there's the modern interpretation. Wow. So pretty. Two-tone. And there's your Bentley stitching that you can see on Kias these days, believe it or not. Kia does a great job of stealing everything they want from other manufacturers and making their own. They do it and it looks great. <laughs> so kudos to Kia for giving uh, the average Joe Bentley seats in their car. Rolls Royce. Really, the, the two-tone is the way you want to be here. Cooling vents here on the side. 37 Rolls Royce here. Wow. And look, you can have a picnic on it too. Yeah. Which is exactly what these people are doing. Yep. You got a picnic basket, eh, boo boo. <laughs> Very nice. That's the way to do it. Doing the car show in style. And uh, look, they even came with picnic items. Of course. Standard with a car like this. Very, very cool. Wow. Two-tone blue there is beautiful. People, people have their dogs out today. And they're beautiful, beautiful cars. Wow, look at this one. That is just stunning. I tell you. Let's go figure out what this thing is. Exactly. They are so Drive one to 1946. There you go. Everybody says, Wow. Beautiful. Just continue on down the line here. Lincoln Continental with the suicide doors. And uh, it's a convertible. This is not too dissimilar from the Kennedy car, actually. Which stretched a bit, but um, wow, suicide doors on a convertible, no B pillar, that's pretty cool. Park Lane, very, very cool. Mercury Park Lane, wow, Ford Lincoln Mercury, very cool. More Continental, this one has a Continental wheel in back, it's a uh, 1957, I believe. This one, really just cool looking car. Cougar. <laughs> That's the car as a cougar. It's not. It's not a lady. <laughs> it does. It does like much younger cars, though. Okay, a little joke there. Haha. Uh -huh. Anyway, two-tone blue interior here, and uh, also the piping and the seats. Man, they just they don't make them like this anymore. This is just a beauty. Check it out. 1957 Continental Mark II. Let's get right out here so you can see. Taking the scope of this thing, it's just massive. Very cool. There you go, Cougar, as I said. Later, Lincoln Continental here. And uh, they had the cool pop out headlights here in the front. No information on that one. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking with this one here. The 80s were not that great for cars. <laughs> I mean, they're cool, they have their certainly their charm. They were comfortable cars too, but uh, man, I don't think it's just the best era at all. But uh, 1982, even though this is when I grew up, I mean, I remember these cars on the street. You know, my friends' parents had some of these, like the 70s. There were a lot of bad cars in the 70s too. A lot of good cars, but there were a lot of bad ones too. But this one's from the 60s here. Just comment. 1960. There you go. Barely to the 60s. So uh, just contrast the difference here. You got 60s. And uh, you've got 70s. <laughs> well, this might be into the 80s. Let's see. No, 76. Yep. So 70s. The wood on the side. And then you got the 60s here, 1960. And then back to the 80s. Man. Definitely different ways to skin a cat there. And. Uh, Interesting to see them all together. This thing is beautiful. Man, I think all classics should be this color. Turquoise, look, it's got a blue 260 engine in there. 64 Mercury Comet Caliente convertible. Beautiful. Definitely a show winner. And, uh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Wow. Looks great. 
Another color that you want your classic to be. This this is basically the best the best two colors you can find in classic cars in my view. There's a badly Monterey. Mercury Monterey, I guess. Yep, 1956. There you go, that's a cool looking car right there. Yeah. Now we get into the Mercedes SLs. This one is 1987, two years before they ended the run in this particular SL. Check out my reviews of the 109 Mercedes SL. Had three of them. This one is lovely. This is actually a Pagoda car without the Pagoda because it's got the uh, soft top on right now. But uh, ain't she pretty? What year? 68. So in 71, 72, they switched over to the uh, later one, 109. And this is a Pagoda. Just beautiful. And these are a lot more valuable. Why? Because, well, just look. Here you go. Look at this one and look at this one. <laughs> Again, it's that 80s versus uh, 70s sort of thing in the late 60s. This is just very, very pretty and elegant cars. Not that these aren't, because they are, but uh, it's just a different sort of elegance. Now, I and most people prefer these because, well, just look. That's why they're more about 280 SL. 250. What's somebody revving up over there? I think that might be the Countach. There's a Lamborghini Countach up there. We'll get to that, don't worry. I don't know what that is. Anyway, moving on here, another Pagoda. And there you see the Pagoda top, named after the Japanese Pagodas. And uh, yeah, this one's very pretty. This is Two's car. And uh, she does a 007 event that you can go to. It's a black tie party celebrating cars and James Bond and dressing up nice and going out and having fun. And it uh, looks like the eighth one is coming up. So there you have it. And uh, <laughs> nice shot there. Let's see. I'll give a quick promo if I can, if it has the date here. Uh, October 27th, 2018. Probably right around the time you'll be watching this video. So uh, there you go. VIP Champagne Reception at the Marriott and Fairview Park in Falls Church, Virginia. So there's some promo for her there with the 007 party. And they also put on a cool event and raised some money for charity too. This one to me is very bright. ESL blue with a nice light interior. Oh yeah. Gorgeous. 1968. Ooh. Very nice. And finishing off the row here with more Mercedes SLs. And here we get into a uh, wagon here. It's like a 300 TE 89 Mercedes wagon. And on down the line here, Mercedes sedan, 250,000 miles. Not uncommon with these turbo diesels. Very reliable cars. And uh, even an earlier coupe. My car doesn't even Very pretty. It is a 1959. Wow. Beautiful interior. Custom tailored luggage as well. She's a beauty. 1966 Mercedes. Another coupe. Here we have a Gullwing. Oh yeah. Very rare bird here. And uh, I've had a video on this car before. Check out elsewhere on YouTube for this 300 SL. But this one is a very rare color. It's kind of a plum color, purple, violet. And it is an original color. And there's some history on that, which I go into more detail in the other video I did on this car. But uh, suffice it to say, it's a rare color in a very rare car, of course, with the gull wing. Doors. I mean, imagine this in the mid 50s. I mean, come on. You just would be blown away if you saw this. <laughs> so, it was really, really the car to have back then. And it still is really, really the car to have. Draws a crowd. So, there you go. There's the Mercedes cars. Pontiac Grand Prix. 
getting into some GTOs here and some classic American muscle here. Smoking the Bandit Trans Am. Shame that Burt Reynolds just passed away. He is an icon and uh, smoking the Bandit. <laughs> I saw that movie in the theater with my parents. Am I dating myself? Maybe. But um, I was very young, so probably too young to see that movie, but I guess my parents wanted to see it and they dragged me to see it. So I loved it though. It's a great movie. Great cars too. Just like the GTO. An icon. Looks kind of like my Chevelle. All these cars kind of look the same. Buick. Chevy. Whatever. They all kind of had the same body and they just made tiny changes on it. There goes this Eldorado. And, uh, on down the line, Fiero. This is a rare Fiero with kind of the uh, fastback design. And this is the more standard car that you see. A lot of these were made into uh, kit cars. Kit Lamborghinis or something else. Kit Ferraris. So I guess they're probably hard to find because a lot of people want to make those other cars out of them. GTO here. Right? Yeah, 66. Very clean. More and more GTOs on down the line. Man, am I a sucker for these two-tone blue cars. 1955 Pontiac Star Chief. Hmm. That's got to be a rare car. Don't see many of those. 64 GTO. Oh, look at this one. Unrestored and quite, quite um, patina. I think it looks great. 1957 Pontiac Chieftain. They probably couldn't get away with calling a car cheap in these days. But uh, back then anything went. And I like the way they've kept this car. Probably how they found it. <laughs> very, very cool. Nice. All right, Pontiacs. Wow. Silver streak. Down the line here. Detroit 442, baby, baby, yeah, I can rock with you. Yes, that's what that Blondie song is about. 442, Olds, and uh, Cutlass Supreme. Wow. Mila Milia, wow. So that car is pretty old and historic to be able to compete or to drive the Mila Milia around Italy. Mila Milia means thousand miles. You have a race around Italy every year. They still do it and uh, you can tour your car around Italy, but you have to be chosen and selected. You can't just bring your car, it has to be a specific time period, and that one obviously matches it, so that's cool. A lot of people will buy a car that old, just so they have the uh, provenance to uh, go ahead and, provenance, to go ahead and participate in some of these vintage events that you need to have specific years of cars and specific quality of cars too. And that is one of them. We're getting newer Olds 88, but uh, yeah, a couple of Supremes and the like, Buick. Here is uh, Todd's Buick Riviera here, very cool car, he's waving at us there, and uh, it's a beauty, it's a beauty. I hope to be reviewing this in about a month or so, do a full review on this one, because the Riviera is an icon, right Todd? Yes, right, yes. absolutely. Scary. Bill Mitchell's first solo design. There you go. Yep. Took over for... From Harley Earl. Right, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and that was so a hard act go. to follow. Believe me. And uh, yeah, this was going to be a Cadillac, but instead it's a Buick Riviera. So more on that later, hopefully a full review coming, right Todd? Absolutely. All right, yeah, watch I've for been... it on Drive and Ivan. Drive and Ivan, yep, yep, exactly. And continuing on down the line with some Buicks here. Ooh, a Maryland 1928 license tag, that's pretty cool. So with classic cars here in this area, you can get a tag from the year of your car and you can actually put it on, which is, I think, very cool. Yeah. They let you do that at the Riviera here. Not as pretty, I don't think, as my friend Todd's down there, but uh, a Riviera nonetheless. Still the same basic shape. Okay, getting to the Corvairs here. <laughs> they got a little mini engine in the Hemi. Because the engine's in back, of course. So check out my review of my 64 Corvair convertible. I give some history on the car, too. But these are, that's a later one. 
And uh, oh, so yeah. is this one. Let's see it. Oh, there's no earlier Corvairs here, but there is a Cosworth Twin Cam Vega. That's right. This is the uh, this is the car that really started Cosworth here and started the um, history of that twin cam engine associated with Lotus as well. Uh, really cool car. Both my brothers had Vegas actually, and uh, they're pretty cool cars. You know, when you're young, you think all these cars are cool, especially if you get to drive them. So, uh, cars that you drive first are really cool. And my uncle had a beautiful, I think a 74 blue and white camper that I really wish he would have sold, but he didn't, probably because he knew it had a lot of problems with it, even though it was in really pristine condition. This is a later camper, multivan, and uh, so that one's from the 70s, and this one's a 1993. So there you go. This is a nicely restored uh, 1973 Porsche 914. Look, original window sticker on this one. 944 from 1996. How much was a 1996 Porsche 944, you might be asking yourself? Well, out the door, it was uh, $33,247. That's a lot of money back then. 19 in the city and 27 on the highway. In case you're wondering what sort of fuel economy these cars get. Check out my full review of the Porsche 944 elsewhere on YouTube. But uh, this is a cool car. I like them in white. They look good in white, Porsche. More Mercedes here and then hey, we're uh, getting into some other stuff here. We'll get back to the Porsches soon on my next lap, but I'll save those for later. Ooh, it's a tease. 350 Chevelle. My first car was a Chevelle, 1970 convertible Malibu with a 307. Pretty slow Rochester carburetor. Couldn't get out of its own way, actually, but uh, I had fun cruising around in it nonetheless. It was, after all, a convertible. There's a Z. Not an IROC Z. Oh, it is an IROC Z. Yes, it is. Hit rocks. IROC. Camaro, 350. Yeah. Camaro. And uh, on down the line. Wow. Classic Coke bottle collection down there. Look at that. This is pretty cool. 1927 Chevy. What's a 1927 Chevy look inside? Well, let's find out. There we go. That's what a 1927 Chevy looks like inside, of course. How many miles on the clock? Do we know? Oh, I have no idea. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? 26,000. That can't be right. That can't be original mileage. I don't think that's the original uh, emblem there, either. That is awful cool. <laughs> Next, we have another Chevy. Very pretty. Looks like a late 50s... Uh, Standard Chevy there, nice little fins on the back. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Let's check it out. Here. I'll give you a little more information on this one. Yup, it is a 57. That's the year you want. That's the year that had the coolest fins. And uh, my granddad had one of these, turquoise and white actually. Beautiful cars. Love the convertibles too, but any way they are, they're cool. And on down the line to the Chevys. Yeah. This is what the dead milkman would call a bitch in Camaro right here. This thing is awesome. Yeah. It's Krager Mags. So what happens? They look like. I'm not sure if they are or not. But uh, man, that thing is just way, way cool. I have reviewed the new version of this one. I have not reviewed an older one of these. Beautiful Chevy truck here. I guess it's a 1959. Very cool. And yet another one. Yeah. Let's go and see inside of these two. See if we can spot any differences. They look pretty similar. Very cool. Chevrolet Apache. 3100 and 31. That was his 31 too, so they're similar. <laughs> Chevy van here. Definitely reminds you of Scooby-Doo, doesn't it? Chevelle. Late 60s. And uh, this one, fresh fruits and vegetables. Very cool. 1931 on this one. And look, they also had Chevelle wagons. And this is one from 1964. Very cool. It's like a Monte Carlo sort of looking car here. SS, not sure. There's a Chevelle, also from the late 60s. 
1909. You know, people that had cars back then were uh, quite wealthy. Not everybody had cars, even though Henry Ford changed that and uh, made them more affordable. Look at that, a dealer tag from what, 1916? Wow, that is really cool. I don't see that every day. Old Buicks, these are really, really classic cars. You talk about classic cars, that's really a classic car. <laughs> very old and very exotic in a way, but just classic, beautiful. Like these Corvettes, 61, no, that's a 59 actually. And uh, this one, 59, 57 there. Interesting paint schemes on those. There you go. Knock off wheels. 60s Corvette here. Beautiful. Bunch of them. Oh, yeah. Just got my first Corvette. C3 like this one. But earlier body style. They went to this in 1978. A round glass in back. But I like kind of the uh, other shape. So I bought a 77. Check out my review of the C3 1977 elsewhere on YouTube. And uh, here's the 67. This looks like an earlier car also. It's convertible though. Let's see what we got here. 71, yes. An early C3. Really beautiful shape here. On down the line to these Corvettes. Here, this is more like mine right here. This C3 from, uh, well, let's call it yeah, definitely mid 70s, maybe 75, 76, 77, right in there. But this is like mine. Very cool. Like I said, check out the review elsewhere on YouTube. Convertible version here. Wow. It's kind of cool. He's had T tops, well, kind of just tops you can take off. Really, T tops. But um, there's a bar. And uh, it's nice to go topless any way you can. Convertible or target. Not a split window. They went to this because it was uh, more practical. Side pipe, exhaust, really, really cool. And uh, see, there you go. Side exhaust here, and not, not on this one. There's the difference. But stingrays nonetheless. Very cool. Wow, look at this RS clone Carrera right here. That is a beauty. Ain't she a beauty? And there's the uh, mastermind behind it all. And uh, let's see. Yes, Russell Kessler's 1972 Porsche 911 RS clone. Ain't she a beauty? Yes, she certainly is. Man, that looks good. Painted Fuchs and, uh, man, the wing and back. That is just beautiful. Carrera RS, there you have it. Very desirable 911. Even if it's a clone, it's still desirable. This, let's double check the year on this before I get myself into trouble. 1996. So there you go. Air cooled, and uh, it is a 993, the last iteration of the air cooled, which lasted until 1998. That's when the 996s took over. Love the light gauges there. I've not reviewed the 993, yeah, but I have reviewed the 996 and the 911 SC and uh, talk about the differences between all of them and why you need an air-cooled Porsche 911. Check out that. School driving Ivan and air-cooled Porsche 911 and you'll see a lot about these cars. Also check out my 928 that I recently purchased with a five-speed manual transmission. This one, a later car, 32 valve, and uh, the very desirable five speed. There you go. It's got some storage space in it, it's got four seats. It is quite cool. This one was a car that was supposed to replace the 911, but Purist would not be having that. No, sir. Not at all, but still a very cool car. This one is the same color as mine. I have an 82 Targa, light blue metallic. This is not really light blue metallic. This is a limited color that they brought in. He said only like 30 of these were brought into the U.S. But uh, something a zero blue or something. But much rarer than my light blue metallic car. I like Minerva blue. That's my favorite Porsche blue. But this car right here is the right color, if you ask me. I don't even know what this color is. But these Porsche 914s and the weird colors, the greens and the oranges, and this one especially, God, that is just so cool. 
It is a 1976 914, and it is uh, James. Mark Brown. Not the color brown, but Mark Brown. That's the owner. Very nice car. And uh, look at the interior on this one. Love it. Wow. What a great looking car. Beautiful. Two liter. And here's a 1.4 liter. And then down the line to a 2.4 liter 911. 911T. It was a T, E, and S. Touring. Oh, no, that's something else. Mid grade and then the Sport. These are very desirable cars, actually, these days. Why? Because if you look on the cover of Abbey Road, there's one of these off in the distance. That says 28 if. Ooh, it's a whole deal about if Paul McCartney died or not. And uh, if you're curious, well, just Google it on YouTube. And you'll find out some really cool, crazy information about whether or not we have the real Paul McCartney or not these days. But... Um, Back to the Volkswagens here. Yep, camper van and a. It's a Super Beetle. Might be a Super Beetle actually. Beetle convertible, very cool. And uh, nice shot of the engine here in this great looking Volkswagen. This is not really camper. This is kind of just a bus, I would say. But uh, cool. Don't worry, we'll get to the Jags. Don't worry. Of course we will. This one's a rare, rare camper right here. Not a camper, but a, what are they calling this one? Just a VW pickup. Type two double cab pickup. There you go. Cool two-tone color there, that one. Looks great. These early VWs it just really stand out. This one, of course, it's been bagged, dropped. It is really cool, bug life. But the earlier ones, there's just a special flair they have, even if they're not modified. They just look different than the later ones. And uh, you can just tell by looking at them which ones are early and which ones are late. So, 74 versus 56. Look at the difference. You can tell. See? See the touches in chrome there? See the badge? You can tell that's an earlier car. But the Wolfsburg badge, yeah. 1956, sunroof. Does that have a round window? I think it does, actually. My aunt had one of these, 1957, and it had the round window, I think. Yep, round window. So there's a big difference right there. And uh, wow, you can tell why classic cars are so cool. Even though the Beetle's cool, the older one, definitely cooler. Cool dog and cool car. Thank you. What type of dog me? is that? How about me? Yeah. Cool guy too. What's oh, okay. with the dog though? What type of dog? That's it. That's an Italian greyhound. Italian greyhound. That I would say is the perfect dog. What's the Italian greyhound's name? Sisu. 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 Hey. Oh yes. You're the lover, aren't you? What a cutie pie. And look at this car. What year? 68. 68. The car that Enzo Ferrari said was the best looking car made. Yeah, and if Enzo said, Ferrari said it... I, I would disagree with him because I think that the 250 GTO he made was better looking than this one. <laughs> it's close. Those but, are the but, top two, let's but, say. But I was not able to afford it. Yeah, who can these days? Wait, if you win the lottery that's coming up, no one won it. So I have five numbers for it. No one won it. We're safe. We'll try again next week. <laughs> E-type. There's a spike of fuel injection. Alpha, we'll get to the Alphas in a second. But now we're on the E-Type Jags. Here we go. Yes, Enzo Ferrari said these were the most beautiful cars ever created. Even though he makes beautiful cars himself, or made them. The Commendatore, Enzo Ferrari. Yup. Hatchback, kind of open from the side. How cool is that? These are great cars. I drove in on one of these. Maybe I'll show you that video now. Sure, why not? Oh, well. Great 
traffic jam. Look at that. What, yeah, that's like a Secret Service looking thing. It's like that thing that travels with the president, you know? It's like a crazy looking car. Good morning, welcome. Human help? I think so, yeah. Awesome. Good to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Somebody help me. Yeah. 54 Jag XKSE. Yeah, and then actually, this is my buddy's car here, Lyle. This is the one I hitched a ride from him and got down the road here. I arrived in style in this beautiful car here. 1970 Jag E Type. Man, what a great car. That's beautiful. Of course, you need the driving gloves too. Look at all those switches inside. And that's what these cars are famous for, actually. If you look over here, you see all those switches and knobs? Well, people actually like the earlier ones of the E-Type here because they changed those switches because they were unsafe in accidents. So that's why the earlier ones are more desirable. It's strange little things like that that make these cars more or less valuable. And so there you have it. But that one would be more valuable if it had the flippy switches of this one, which is a 1964 Mark II Jaguar. And just look at the interior there. That's why you want a Jag. Yep. Red line wheels. Armor. Nice Jag sedan there. Beautiful wheels on that. What is that, like a Lynx type Jaguar or something? Let's see. Just an XJ6, but look, it's the stick shift. That makes it extremely rare. Really hard to find a stick shift Jag. Very, very cool. Great looking wheels too. Well, I have a full video on this Maserati 3500 GTI elsewhere on YouTube, but man, is it a cool car. Very, very nice. Look, Ferrari Daytona 365. GTV4 Daytona, I believe, is the official designation, but uh, that's a classic. I actually like the Ferrari 400 from this era. Check out my videos on that car. 355 Berlinetta here. Berlinetta means hard top. Yeah, it is kind of. It's like the good old day. GTS here. That's the last of the threes. Magnum, P Magnum PI Ferrari styling there. Later cars. Actually, they changed the wheels a bit. And I like the earlier wheels better. This one was also 3.2 Mondial. So these have the same engine. And uh, they're more desirable because they're later cars and they're faster, actually. But I think the earlier ones are a bit easier to work on. 355 Spider. Great cars, these Ferraris. One, uh, what's that, a 599 or a 612. Tough to tell sometimes with the newer ones. F12 Berlinetta, see, there you go. It's got the Testarossas on it, the redheads. That's where Ferrari came up with the name Testarossa. But uh, F12 Berlinetta here. And then, of course, the very famous Ferrari F40, which is the last car that Enzo produced when he was alive. So this is a very valuable car. Late 80s, to early 90s. And uh, this is Ali Ash's car. He used to own Ferrari of Washington, actually. So he's got a nice car collection here. And this F40 is certainly a highlight. You see this car a lot around this area. It's nice that he drives it and has it out for people to look at it because it is a very special car. So people can go up and take their pictures with it and things like that. Carbon fiber, plastic cover there, basically. And uh, you can really see the engine. All right, we should probably see the engine on the F40. Don't you think? Why not? So it's a 92 F40, racing seats in there, Kevlar light materials, and uh, really, there's nothing to save you in this car. If you uh, don't know what you're doing in this car, right, safe to say that you're in trouble, right? Uh, it's pretty easy to get in trouble, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Taken from the man who drives it. And uh, I once followed this man with a Lancia Zagato, trying to keep up with him back in the day at a car tour we used to do, sports car touring day. Remember that? Back in the day. I couldn't keep up with you. I wonder why. <laughs> but I tried. <laughs> you, know, you can drive slowly. Yeah, I know. It's really tough. This is Bob's, a friend of mine's. He got a brand new Ferrari here, 488. And this, over here, I got to show this to you because it's about to leave. It's a Di Tommaso Pantera. Looks like the GTS or later one. American engine. It's got a beautiful 
Italian crafted body. Yeah, it is a DTS. Listen to that thing rumble. Very cool. A little faster than this one. Also like a Nissan figure or thing. Anyway, on down the line of these Ferraris, it seems like they're all later ones today, all the 328s. Right. And, uh, oh, here we go. Here's an earlier 308. And you can see the wheels here differ a bit from the 328s. I actually like the wheels on the earlier car a bit better. I think they're a little deeper. They had to change them, I think, to make the tires bigger. But uh, this is the Magnum PI one, which basically made red Ferraris famous. And... Uh, Always had the top off when he was driving it because he was too tall actually to fit in this thing with the top on. So there's a little bit of Magnum PI trivia for you. And they actually just redid the show. It's actually on now, which is kind of wild. These Ferraris right here I think are undervalued. This is the 308 GT4. And they originally came with Dino badges on them because uh, Dino was Enzo Ferrari's son who actually died of a strange uh, disease. But um, they actually had Dino badges and they couldn't sell them as well so they <laughs> went ahead and put Ferrari badges on them in America but they are actually Dino Ferrari Dino 308 GT4s and uh, this one blue on blue is just really really nice it's got the H gate shifter but it's a Bertone design so it's not as desirable as the 308 built by Pin and Farina here Basically the same engine though. In fact, you can get one of these in Canada and Europe with a two liter engine. It's a 208 GT4. That's a rare bird, but you do see those occasionally. And here another 308. This one, my buddy Fred's car. You can tell because of the plate. And he's got the sheepskins in it from the 80s. Oh yes, he does. Rolling in those sheepskins, nice car. And he keeps it well, and he maintains it himself too. These guys are always getting together at uh, Cars and Coffee and they're always talking about the technical issues they're having, but they know everything about fixing these cars. Good people to know if you have one of these. Let's keep it Italian and uh, say goodbye to this nice SL Mercedes rolling away there too. With the doors up, of course. But uh, this is a Lancia Fulvia right here. Beautiful Italian coupe. <laughs> coupe means cut. So they take the sedan body and they cut it and you come up with a coupe. Beautiful. This one, uh, kind of a burgundy example. Fulvia second series, 1.3 liter engine. V4 engine in these. That's right, you heard it right. It's a V4 engine. And these are just really quintessential Italian sports sedans. I mean, sport coupes. There you go, sport coupes. So, um, there you have it. Lancia Fulvia sport coupe. And, uh, Wow, beautiful car. Next to the Spider here. And then on, Fiat 500. Beautiful, Cinquecento. Here's a car that's very near and dear to me because I had one of these. How fast did it rust out? I had a very rusty late mid 70s one, which I did have to just send away. They towed it away, but I had two 1981 Lancia Zagatos. And that's basically, they took this car, sent it over to Zagato, and they took the top off and they put a Targa on and a roll down back window. And this is a Beta Coupe from what year? 76. 76, so this is fuel injected. Not like the later, oh this, I mean not, uh, that's what I misspoke. This is not fuel injected. They started fuel injection in 1981 and uh, that's the year I had it. Fuel injected in 1981. But this one is, uh, really really cool to have carbureted Lancia Beta and it's also very cool to have one that's not rusted out <laughs> because a lot of these just rusted out trust me I know and uh, he's gonna open the hood for me if it works if it works because it's a Lancia it might not wait let's see uh, it's nope just same thing mine did mine wouldn't lift up either so twin two Barrel Weber's on this car. I have a BMW uh, 1978 320i with dual Weber's on it, actually. So they're positioned a little differently on that car. But I, I love what you've done with the the, <laughs> the wire here and. I'm original owner of this dude. Wow, original owner! I can't believe it. That's amazing. You've kept it nice. Trust me. I can well, tell you've kept it very nice. Because <laughs> these are hard to keep yeah. in good shape. Um, yeah, fortunately it's been garaged a lot. 
<laughs> Otherwise, it would rusted away. Yeah, really. It's uh, this but is a time machine. Really, really, really was, nice. Uh, an eighty-six horsepower engine with lots of controls on it. Uh huh. It's probably about one fifty. Wow. Yeah. Has, uh, they're about one. I thought they're about one fifteen. In the well, fuel injected one later. Yeah, the, the two liter fuel injected might be. Yeah. Uh, Not as much in this one, huh? But this one's this one's cam cam and balanced. So. Very nice. So there you have it, a beautifully kept one owner 1976 Lancia Beta Coupe. Very very cool. Auto Bianchi. It fooled me. I thought it was a Nissan Figaro, but they're very similar cars, believe it or not. This one is quite cool. My uncle had one of these, actually, and I let him drive my Fiat 500 test car that I was reviewing, and he loved it. Why? Because it reminded him of this one. 1961 Fiat Auto Bianchi. <laughs> Mach 1 Mustang, 1972. Man, those were beasts. Cool cars, though. Lies low. 71 D Tommaso Pantera. Beautiful cars. Big Ford engines inside. And, uh, man, a lot of fun. Diablo VT. Check out my uh, interview with Valentino Balboni at the factory in like early 90s. And this is a car that he was testing at that time. The Diablo VT had just come out. All wheel drive Lamborghini Diablo. Here we see a uh, Ferrari Daytona trying to back out without hitting something. That's always fun. There it is. 365 GTB4, also known as the Ferrari Daytona. So back onto these Lamborghinis here. Of course, the uh, famous scissor doors. This one, look, looks like it's signed by Valentino Balboni. I think. I think that's his signature, not sure. But, uh, yep, there you have it. And uh, a couple of T-Birds coming down the way here. Let's check them out. Yeah. Nice little parade here. Beautiful interior. And next, don't see that color very often. Don't think it's original. It's still very cool. Very nice. And here, La Pièce de Résistance, the Lamborghini Countach, proper black and gold. And uh, this car, they built a mock-up of it, and the guys came in to see it, the factory workers, and they said, Countach, when they saw it. That's basically an Italian dialect slang, probably meaning something like, oh crap, or something like that. And uh, there you have it. That was uh, probably in the earlier 70s, but this one is, I think, the best one. I believe it's a Quattro Valve 88, and uh, to me this is the best shape. I like the earlier ones too, don't get me wrong, 4000, but this is, yes, the 5000 Quattro Valve, and I didn't like the later Evolution that they did. Actually, Pagani is the guy that did the 88 Evolution, he built the parts out of carbon fiber and such for Lamborghini when they did that version, because he used to work for Lamborghini before he made cars of his own, but... Uh, this one, this is the one that all the kids had the posters of in their room, the Lamborghini Countach. Yes, and rightly so. Man, is this a great car. Tony, how are you? Beautiful. That's a well-loved Alfa Romeo graduate. Why is it called a spider graduate? Well, because of the movie, The Graduate, Dustin Hoffman. His, of course, was a duetto. I think it was an early 60s boat tail. Might have been late 60s, actually. Botail, yeah, it was late 60s Alfa Romeo Duetto that he drove in the movie, The Graduate, and the rest is history. But this one actually made the entry-level version of The Graduate, and uh, this did not have those wheels on it. These are like mini light Panasports, sports, look really cool on it, but uh, this one's been well-loved, and uh, hey, I like it. Here we have the earlier Alfa Spider, beautiful example. A couple later ones here. This is kind of the last incarnation that they sold in the United States. And this one, the one that started it even before the Duetta there. Beautiful car. And uh, I think we really need to see these from the front. Notice the stick shift coming out of the uh, dash there and all these. It's a trademark of the Alfa Romeo. And uh, <laughs> little kids getting this picture taken. But look at the grill there. Very, very cool. Okay, so three 
alpha spiders in a row. Yes, yes, yes. There you go, 57, I don't know, what is it? No, it's actually a 1964. Let's get around to where the sun's a little better here. So, there you go. She is a beauty. Beautiful. They don't make them like that anymore. Looks like a 70s. Right here, you can tell by the wheels. These, I think, had spike of fuel injection on them. I don't know, it doesn't have a year on it, but I'm going to call this an early 70s, I think. You can post in the comments, but uh, really cool. Red interior too, nice. A bunch of old Fords up top there. And even a playground for the kids here. A lot of vendors here today, a lot of cars for sale. This is just a very impressive, impressive show. Cars from all eras. 1926 here. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. So cool. Well, cars are starting to leave now. I better wrap up this video. I want to show you everything here. Every single car here. That's my goal. And uh, just head on down the line here. Lamborghinis. Wow. Lifted. Lifted classic 1966 Ford F-250, F-100 there. Ha! Huh. I followed this one in and this one couldn't keep traction. This one was sliding all over the place on the way in here. I saw it. Yeah. It was funny. Who was driving it? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. You were, you were slipping and sliding. Remember that Porsche right behind you? That was me. <laughs> it was cool. I liked it. That's the way you drive them. Nice job. Oh, look at that. Military Hummer H1. Yeah. Cool. Bronco. They're going to make the Bronco again. That's pretty cool to have one of these. I think they're definitely going to go up in value. getting more and more desirable. As time goes on, people are starting to realize the classic SUVs are also cool classics and very usable. What is this with the Ford Mustang wheels on it? It's like a Ford Falcon? I don't know. Yeah, Ford Falcon with Mustang wheels. It's the right color too. Great color. There we go. This is a Ford Falcon also, 1964 convertible. But man, I just can't get over this one. The light blue. Let's see what color the interior is. Hmm. It's also blue, of course. Yes. Very cool. All right. Ford Galaxy 500. Right next to another classic. That's right. The Pinto. One of the first cars I drove. These were cool, man. As I said earlier, any car that you could drive when you were around the age of 16 was cool. And that's what made this one even more cool. Very, very cool. Oh, wow, an Edsel wagon. You don't see one of those every day. Edsel wagon. I just did a video on the Edsel. This one, 1958 Edsel wagon. So cool. It's like they got the Motor Trend car test. Edsel wants to be your car company. <laughs> That's hilarious. Aruba. Very good. Cool. And a Falcon Futura. A lot of cars seem like they're leaving. Check them out. There goes the Auto Bianchi. Auto Bianchi. There's a Bianchi. 
debatable. Seven Chevy. Nice. And here we are with the Citroëns. That's right. So here goes a Traction Avant. What year? 46. 46 Traction Avant. I do have a full video on this car elsewhere on YouTube. From what I saw down in the islands, actually. You see that every day. But... Here go the Citroëns. There's a Deux Chevaux. We call it a 2CV here in America, but French call it a Deux Chevaux. We've got a whole picnic going on there. Cool to see the Citroëns rolling out. As I said, check out my review of my 1987 Citroën CX Wagon elsewhere on YouTube. There's a light blue metallic looking uh, Porsche 911. Again, it's an Azuro blue or something. But uh, nice. Nice to see these cars being driven as they roll out of here. But let's see what we got up here. Looks like a Renault. Am I right? Maybe some Mazda. Did you see that Shelby? Pretty wild looking. The green one? Yeah, it is a Renault. Okay, I am on. Thought it was a Renault. Um, looks like a Caravelle or something. What's this one called? Let's see, I can't remember. Caravelle, yep. There you go. So the Renault Caravelle, beautiful car. Take a walk around it. There's a Citroen DS19, but uh, you do not see these very often. Beautiful French cars with the engine in the back. A derriere, not avant. <laughs> really, really cool. Nice. Is it yours? Oh, okay. All right, let's walk on down here, try to get to the rest of the cars here before everybody takes off. A lot of Mustangs. Took my uncle's 66 convertible to prom, actually. Beautiful pony interior car that he had there, deep forest green with green interior. I'm sure that car is still out there somewhere. One other car until uh, that person bought it for my uncle. Up there, a lot of cool SUVs. Yeah, but a pink Mustang, that's pretty rare. So here's the dichotomy of cars today. Look at this one, and then look at that one, the F40, along with an old, 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 old. Wish I could tell you what that is, I can't. But it's really cool and really old. And then you got this beautiful F40 down here last car that Enzo Ferrari oversaw when he was still alive in the mid late 80s there and uh, just a legend very very cool car that's what's so cool about this event everywhere you look cool cars from all countries all backgrounds anything you want to see is at this Rockville show one of the best shows in the DC area I think because of just the different cars you get out here. Great. We're getting to a fastback Mustang. That's pretty cool. Nice looking wheels on that one. Yeah. GT350 Shelby. Jim Morrison had a Shelby GT350 that the record company gave him when the Doors album did well. Sold a bunch of copies, so they, uh, it was Paul Rothschild, got him hooked up with that. He wrecked it, actually, and uh, apparently left it on the side of the road. Sunset Strip, that's the story. Wow, that one is a beautiful car here. Look at that. Look at what you can do to these. Man. Looks like it's all coated and waterproofed inside. So you can really enjoy this car. You can just get around and uh, use it in the mud, throw it around, go off-road with it. And uh, these are really going up in value too, these Wagoneers. Nobody wanted these things for the last 20 years. <laughs> Couldn't sell these for much money. Now they're going crazy in value. Scout, International Scout, that is very cool. Kind of a mutter they made out of it. And there you go. This is the last little section. Some Rolls Royces and I guess latecomers that came up here and then uh, 
some T-Birds as well. Rockville, classic car show. Great cars as far as the eye can see. And there you have it, the 2018 Rockville Car Show. Great classic cars here today of all varieties. Hope you've enjoyed watching it. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Check out all my videos. Music video for Chris Isaac's Wicked Game. It's actually a literal video. Very funny, you'll enjoy it. Documentaries on poker and also reality TV. And uh, disc golf videos too. And any car you want to see, just Google the car and drive in Ivan and you'll see it. And of course, follow me on Twitter and Instagram too. And subscribe and share with your friends. I'm driving Ivan.